Dr. Golden, thanks for joining us here on Health Connection. You're I welcome. love this topic. Is high cholesterol foods no longer a danger? Question mark. So let's explore that. Start off with what is cholesterol and how is it relevant to our health? Well, cholesterol is a natural substance that's produced in the body. It's also consumed in the diet and it's used to make cell membranes, hormones, has several very definite processes that take place in the body. So you need cholesterol. You absolutely have to have it. The problem comes in when you have too much cholesterol. Well, we hear about cholesterol. You see a million TV commercials about it. And we hear about good cholesterol. We hear about bad cholesterol. Definitions and what's the difference? Well, the cholesterol is either consumed in the diet or produced in the liver and it's then transported around in the body and then it has to be removed from the body and it's transported on particles and the bad cholesterol is the excess cholesterol that's transported around on particles which are called bad cholesterol particles and is then deposited in places like blood vessels and causes hardening of the arteries Good cholesterol, on the other hand, is a method in which the body removes cholesterol and transports the cholesterol on the good particles out of the body. So good cholesterol, you'd like to be higher to move more out. Bad cholesterol, you'd like to be lower because you want the lowest level uh, that you can get. And we hear the terms HDL and LDL, so let's clear that up. HDL is the good cholesterol. It stands for high density lipoprotein. So I remember it, you want that higher and it starts with an H, okay. and LDL is low density and you want that lower and it starts with an L. Well, we go to the doctor, we get our annual physical, we get our blood test and there are guidelines for cholesterol. So when we get those results back, what should the readings be? Well, that's changed. There's been some recent guideline changes, probably took place about two years ago. Uh, and basically, you'll, you should get your uh, lab values and then depending upon your age and your cardiac risk score and whether you do or don't have a history of heart disease, then you would get a different level where we would want your cholesterol. But where you might have once heard that your cholesterol should be less than 70, less than 100, now depending upon the range, it just tells you which medication you should take to get the best effect on your cholesterol. So it's not a direct answer. Right. If your cholesterol is 150 and you have a high risk and you go on a medication that should drop it by 50%, then you'd want your cholesterol down around 75. Okay. As opposed to saying it has to be 70, it has to be 100. This was the controversy when these guidelines came out because most of us are used to thinking in the same way you asked the question, what should my cholesterol be? less than a hundred but there's no longer that clear an answer well you said new recommendations there were recommendations to indicate that cholesterol the, with respect to cholesterol heredity plays a greater role than the than the foods that we eat which seems a bit surprising what do you think about this well i don't know that that's that's necessarily new information it's always been felt that the body produces more cholesterol than you actually consume in your diet, in a regular, regular diet. So the cholesterol in your body comes from two sources. That's that's produced in the body and the cholesterol in your diet. Well, you can have almost no cholesterol in your diet and have a very high cholesterol level because of your genetics and these lipoproteins and the way they handle the cholesterol may be very abnormal and lead to a high cholesterol level. Well, you may have answered this then. Will, will the new guidelines, will anything give us more leeway to eat things that might have been off the menu before? Well, when, you, when you're referring to new guidelines, I think you're probably referring to recent reports of this um, Dietary Guidelines for Americans uh, 2015. Uh, and this is a report that is, was done by a committee and sent to the Department of Health and Human Services recommending dietary changes for Americans. And there are apparently some new recommendations, but these are not guidelines and these have not been accepted, for example, by the Department of Health and Human Services. One of the things they said, to get to your question, is 
The American Heart Association Healthy Heart Diet, the American College of Cardiology, recommends less than 300 milligrams of cholesterol per day. These newest recommendations saying that's not a fixed number, that higher may be okay because that's dietary cholesterol, and we know that it's not greater than 300 is bad, less than 300 is good. There's a bigger range. So they're recommending that you don't look at 300 milligrams a day. That may not be adopted or accepted by any other group that looks at this. It, in fact, all it's been done is been released for public comment. You hear about foods that are supposedly good at lowering cholesterol. One of the ones that you hear about is red wine brings um, LDL levels, or actually raises HDL levels. Any truth to that? Well, a moderate uh, alcohol consumption, which has a very rigid definition of less than one drink per day uh, for women and up to two for men, but it's very rigidly defined, does have an effect on uh, HDL levels or the good cholesterol, mostly a modest effect, and it takes a while for it to uh, develop. Uh, so that's part of the problem with uh, the food supplements, such as red wine and various other. They have a very modest effect on the cholesterol. So if you're, for example, if your uh, bad cholesterol is 120 and you, you want to be down in the uh, half of that range because you have heart disease, a certain food substance might actually lower it, but it might only lower it from 120 to 118. So we're talking about little bits. But my way of looking at this, put all that together and you might get a significant uh, lowering of the bad cholesterol. So I don't ever discourage anybody from following those as long as there's not other side effects that we want to avoid. Well, if heredity plays a bigger role in our cholesterol level than does the food that we eat, what about cholesterol medications? Well, cholesterol medications are designed uh, to lower uh, the cholesterol, specifically the low-density cholesterol or the bad cholesterol. And the cholesterol that's carried around on the particles in the blood that it's going to deposit in blood vessels where you don't want it, you need that level low. And cholesterol medications will lower your LDL or bad cholesterol, and some of them will actually cause a slight rise in the good cholesterol. So if you're cholesterol is above an accepted range, or if you have known heart disease, you will go on medications which are designed to lower the cholesterol. Will the new information that we just talked about change the way that doctors treat patients with high cholesterol? Probably absolutely not. Okay. Uh, in fact, from what I've been able to see in the part of the report that was posted for public comment, they said that the areas uh, concerning fats in the diet, saturated fats, and the areas concerning treatment of cholesterol were taken out of the existing Heart Association guidelines and put into their report. So I don't look for any major change. You mentioned medications. Let me follow up on that. How effective are they and at what side effect cost? Uh, they're very effective. They're currently divided into low intensity and high intensity, what we call statins, which are the type of drugs that are used to lower the cholesterol. The high intensity statin, by definition, should reduce your cholesterol in the range of 50%. So if your LDL is starting off at 150, you should expect maybe a 50% drop in that. Uh, and a low intensity statin, a little less so. So they're very effective. Now, do they have side effects? Certainly they do. Uh, and, and the one that most people are familiar with is they cause a certain amount of muscle aches and also some mus muscle inflammation. And there are other side effects and you have to deal with those. Most people are able to tolerate the statins. If they have the true side effects, then you have to look for other ways to treat the cholesterol and then you get into areas that are not as clear cut as these current medications. So yes, the medicines are very effective. They do have side effects. Hopefully they're low. So what are the key points for us to remember now about cholesterol and staying healthy? Well, I think the, the most important thing to remember and the thing that's really part of this new report for 2015 healthy eating is that the keys are regular physical exercise, weight control, getting to your ideal body weight, and eating a healthy, 
diet, which means, generally speaking, more fruits, more vegetables, more, more low-fat dairy products, less, less refined sugar, less processed grains. In other words, shifting the diet more onto uh, more of the vegetables and fruits. Now, for uh, anyone who treats uh, high blood pressure or heart disease, these are absolutely not new recommendations. A, di a diet called the DASH diet, which is Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, has been around for years. You can find it on the internet very easily. And it's a f more fruits, more vegetables, less processed grains, uh, less saturated fats. So this is not new information, but that's the kind of diet we should be on. With that and exercise, hopefully you will then be able to lower your weight and get to ideal body weight. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.